What is going on, guys? Wiser here, coming to you with the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was a random matchup against the one and only Golden Goblins. Yes, I gave you guys a little bit of a heads up. We've had some crazy matchups all the last couple weeks. It's been awesome. Uh, so this was sort of a... Um, a pre-match, a little uh, little preview into week six of the mid-season CWL where we do actually match uh, match up GG on our schedule. Uh, we do have home field advantage for that one, <laughs> whatever whatever that means. Um, I do, I'm really liking it. I I'm really liking this CWL. I'm liking the way, uh, a lot of aspects. I do want to give give some, some good comments. A, I'm liking how it's being policed. It seems to be have some very strict rules and very strict guidelines and well, I should, strict rules that if you break, you could, your clan could be removed potentially. Um, all the clans in so far, at least from what I can tell, seem to be complying and, and also enjoying the very structured sort of system. So uh, they're doing a really good job of that. Doing a, a really good job. I was just speaking with um, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Um, about him doing his videos and so he's he's doing like power bangs obviously doing a lot of stuff for um, sort of like the weekly highlights kind of thing um, so I believe uh, Lannister was doing that as well uh, so he's kind of getting this going this this could blow up into something big right and and I think I think the way it's being ran um, is absolutely how it needs to be done to progress to that next level um, so we'll see how this midseason kind of pans out but uh, this was a hell of a war. This was one of those ones that you live for. 108, 107. Victory goes out to 2.0, but very sort of strange occurrences in the war. We're just going to run through this. This base is going to haunt the Golden Goblins for the rest of their lives. I'm actually going to do a little episode. Um, I'm going to record it. Obviously, before I lose the lose the replay information, but gonna release it in a couple weeks. Um, sorry, my team defenses big Papa four for four, holding off even a star. And if you look at the war stats, they're very very large percentage destruction uh, advantage. If they had just managed to pull off one, we really expected after their third fail, they only had. I'm, I'm assuming the guy had it already planned. But at, at, at some point when we failed um, one of our final bullies, uh, it was only within a few minutes left in the war. Um, I forget exactly what happened. I know guns had guns had a miss on one of their 10s, which would have put us at 109, which would have meant they needed the two stars here. But as soon as that happened, they still had five minutes to react. Um, I guess maybe they didn't want to gem the army, but I think they would have been much better off just throwing 20 baby drags at the base to get... The percentage, get the 50%, get the one star, tie it up and go for the victory. But they didn't. They opted to go for one more two-star attempt on the pace and it did not pan out. BP, VIP, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. VIP of the war, uh, MVP of the war, I should say. That's what I meant to say, not VIP. Derp, it's morning. Hang on, I need a sip of this. Ah, that'll get me in the, in the mode now. Nice copy. So, anyways, as you can see, I mean, both had some successes on some of the bullies. Um, believe they did have one. They sneak away with the 10v10 triple in here, I think, somewhere right there, number 12 on Dan. Um, had a few successful bullies, but man, it is. It is crazy with the state of the game right now. Um, you know, I've, I've been talking about this in every video, and uh, just, just again, uh, I like, to, I like it as constructive discussion um it is seeing you know even we match golden goblins war whales the spartan family and it's the same across the board it's not like it's not like there's a few clans just not not getting it the 10 v 10 triple rate is pathetic and uh, i think everybody can agree with me on on that statement um and, it, and because it's so pathetic, it's not fun. And it sucks for the guys at Town Hall 10. I have a Town Hall 10. So, you know, I've been focusing a lot on hitting, uh, getting some good two stars on Town Hall 11s because that really helps out a lot. Uh, but as you can see, GG did pretty good. They'd use a couple bullies, uh, finish off the nines, as did we. Uh, we did reasonably well on their 11s. Had to use a couple of our 11s. I think two there. Excuse me. Yeah, two of our 11s to clear off theirs. Did have a few successful bullies. 
I'm going to show just a couple of those. I'm only showing too many because, but it, it, the current state of the game, I mean, that's kind of people, you know, you need to know how to do that. It's not, you, you can't just build, you know, 40 miners and, and throw them at the base and, and, and get to the three star. So anyhow, a couple successes. We did have one 10 versus 10 triple Zerds comes through on number 20. So I will be showing that one. Um, and like I said, I think we had to use one bullet because those are all town hall nines all the way down. I know I saw Harley Quinn's name in here somewhere. Which one did we have to bully? I'm going to look real fast. There it is, number 24. Um, I don't know which bases really gave us a huge issue. Um, five hits on number 20 before Zerts came away with it. So that's good. Um, Eight hits on 24. That was that's just a killer. We're gonna take a quick peek at that base. Um, I will not show the live attack. Out of respect for this don't look guy and his awesome base, we're just gonna do a quick scout of the base. You don't even see the traps, but there it is. That base gave us a shit ton of problems. Clearly, um, not exactly sure maybe what the issue was. I didn't get a chance to go through all the attacks, but definitely had to get uh, Jamie to step in with her 10 and just finish things off. So eight attacks is absurd. So that is ended up what causing us to have to bully. So as you can see, I think that was the last base to go and we used like six through six town on nine attacks at it. <laughs> just did not come through. Anyways, let's just jump in. We're gonna start checking out some of this action. Uh, did want to show Ice is almost 70% hit on her here. Ah, these step ups are very interesting. I'm seeing a lot of guys do this. I'm not a huge, huge fan of the baby D's, but I, I understand the concept and I see success with it fairly regularly. So this is something you can definitely try out, guys. Um, basically, what Ice is going to do is clear a lot of the trash on the outside, get his queen down there. So there's really nowhere for her to wander on the outside. Uh, open up that wall instantly. She's just going to walk right into this base. Basically, take out this chunk, take care of the CC. She does get held up because of the hound. Seen a lot of hounds in the CCs at, um, you know, the especially the 11 level. And I think it's a good, a really good CC for you to have because um, it can get, it can make things very tricky. Like, you know, no matter what, the queen is going to get held up for a hell of a long time. Um, and if you don't deal with it, if you're, if you just try and go in with golems and your heroes behind, you know, your queen and any wizards that are there are going to get held up on that hound, split your kill squad up. Um, it, it just, it, it causes issues, um, in all, almost all raids. Uh, the only time I see it not really being viable, uh, is because a lot of guys are bringing air attacks now and, you don't almost don't have to worry if it's a hound on a loon in the CC. Um, you know you can you can basically just go in, and get the queen, get an air defense, and go in with your Lalo, and not worry about the clan castle. Uh, another thing I've been doing on my town hall eleven step ups is I'm bringing a fifth healer all the time. As you see, as you saw there, a black mine took out one of the healers, but still has four healers on that queen, so she's doing work. Handful of Valks go in with the king suicide up the other side, and now you can see. This horseshoe around this ring base is created. So here comes this huge clump of baby drags. It's really only three, maybe four buildings before they, uh, for they're right on top of that town hall. There's just far too many baby drags. There's th those uh, inferno towers just do not, um, do not take them down quick enough. Down goes that first inferno tower. Still has a huge clump. Goes quickly. Fortunately, the air skellies there are uh, holding them up for uh, not long enough, but just doing their hardest to try and prevent them from getting that down hall. Just doesn't work. Take out that other inferno tower. I think they get, he gets a couple more percentage points here, but that's about about it. Nice job, Ice Man. The big two star for us there. That many gets the extra percentage, like with a split second, the eagle blast coming down on it. <clears throat> All right, so real quick, I want to run through just a couple of these these bullies, showing out, showing them how we're doing. A lot of uh, a lot of our guys are really opting out to, to. It's almost like the old school ten versus nine bully when Lalo was just king, because you could go in with a shattered entry with your town hall ten army. And go with the Shattered Kill Squad and pretty much guarantee yourself two air defense 
and the queen and the CC. So leaving uh, that back end Lilo just really, really meaty. You can still bring three lava hounds, like 14 balloons, and, and be really well off. Well, guys are recognizing that old style strat and recognizing that Lilo is becoming still one of the go to attacks right now because. Um, again, because of the state of the game. Uh, so you can bring a bunch of bowlers, bring this huge kill squad, rage in there, and we have now gotten uh, two air defense. We've gotten the queen. We've got that CC yanked out. Uh, thing's still working on that hound. It bursts, taking down the hound. Poisons are down. King still in there, gets all the way across to that next Inferno Tower, gets it down, does not get it down. <laughs> My bad. The sliver of health. Look at that. Look at that and the bowler, I think, or the queen finishes it off here. Yeah, queen steps up. Boom. Two Inferno Towers, two air defense, bunch of Teslas. Make that three air defense. Just absolutely crushes it on his entry here. So goes ahead and gets that hound in right away. Only brings the one out here as well. I thought that was kind of interesting. Nice little free spell over the uh, only remaining air defense and that Inferno or, and that Wiz Tower. Just kind of letting those balloons get in there and do their magic. Now sprinkling them in on the remaining defenses on the outside. As you see, there's far too much <laughs> damage done to this base. There's no way it is going to survive. Down goes that cannon. A couple balloons jump in to help clean up. Tree in the bag for BP. Good job, buddy. So unique, oh, this isn't the one. I want to show the next one. Nick had a little six pack. He didn't have much time. He's working. Uh, it's a weekday for him, so it was tough. So last half hour, he, he basically had half an hour to plan both his hits. Comes away with a very clutch, clutch six pack for us. Um, so unique's going in here. Very old school, right? Uh, 21 bowlers. We're going to go ahead and drop a giant, a couple healers, a few bowlers. Giant, a couple healers, a few bowlers. Nice, wide, wide funnel. Even drops a couple wizards on the outsides to just basically try and get that. The, you know, a lot of times you don't think about these two buildings like on the outside of your funnel. You'll funnel, you'll funnel it off fine. But then what happens is bowlers like right here, if this building or this building was up, after the storage goes down, well, this kill squad is going to take all this crap out. So the bowlers on the outside, which I still think they do, even though it's a great funnel he made here, they walk to the outside, right? So, and they would have more so if you don't take those buildings on the outside. Really, even though you might funnel your troops in, as soon as they get in, they might jump back to the outside because those buildings are still there. So, guys, one on one. I mean, funneling is still such a huge part of every single raid. It's not even funny. The old school fundamentals. Um, nice thing too about Unique's attack gets those giants in very quickly. These first initial bombs. Uh, we're triggered by those giants. The bowlers were left untouched and uses the Grand Warden ability, um, I believe, for that second one. Once everything kind of got in the core, let everything push through. Queen and Grand Warden stepping up, taking care of that second Inferno Tower. Got some uh, bowlers trying to do some action on the outside. I believe the Mortar ends up finishing them off here eventually. But uh, these few bowlers that walked was absolutely perfect because they um, he dropped the, the little Lalo there, bringing those six backhand loons with the haste. Hasting them into those final defenses, and now it's just cleanup time, right? Those preserve those bowlers, um, which I don't know if that builder's hut didn't go down. I don't think this would have been a three star because he only had maybe you know twenty seconds or something like that by the time they got to this builder's hut. So everything would have had to backtrack, and I don't know. Um, so really, kind of just good, uh, good result on the pathing here. Good job, kind of getting all the units split up. As you can see, three stars in the bag. A nice six pack for Team Unique. All right, enough of this crap. Let's rock down to the bottom. I'm gonna rock through a bunch of Town Hall Nines here. There's a lot of nice hits. <clears throat> a lot of nice six packs. I think Bell had one herself. Bell showing her showing her stuff with the Veeler action. Loving seeing uh, seeing this attack rub off on people. Because I just, in my opinion, it's the most powerful Town Hall Nine attack. It's just. Unbelievable. I mean, when I friendly challenge, all I do is Lalo and Hog and, and try new new things and new little comps and tweaks and a few Valks or no Valks. <coughs> and I still, I'm not even close to having the same kind of success rate as I find with Veeler, but you know, it's just me. A lot of people see bases differently. A lot of people have different uh, comfort zones and whatnot. So Bell's doing a really good job here. Gets that CC pulled out right after that queen goes down. 
It takes care of that witch, that baby D, all that stuff goes down. Goes in and drops the bowlers um, up here. I thought it was an interesting choice for her healer placement. Um, I probably would have just dropped the, the healers right on the bowlers. Uh, there's nothing really attacking up the middle there. Um, so the healer, healer on the king is sort of a waste, uh, but gets everything in here very quickly. The Valks only have one place to go now, right into this very, very valuable chamber. You're going to see this raid spell goes down. Look how fast this insanely high DPS chamber goes down. Boom, 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 dead, 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 dead. And the Valks just move on. What I love about this attack, when you have good rage placement for your Valks, and they can essentially, I mean, the other thing I thought was interesting was the jump. See, just just for people's information, I don't bring, I wouldn't ever bring that jump. Reason being is I know the Queen would have would have funneled all this up. So the only threat, I mean, once the Valks are in here, could have pushed that rage, so it was touching this core wall that the jump spell is on right here. If that rage was there, the Valks would have basically one shot into this compartment. You drop the heal spell. They're going to quickly go to the next wall and basically be, be at this same point, beating down that wall to half uh, without the jump spell. So just a thought. And then you get a second rage out of the deal or even a heal for your little hoggies you got down here. I like that as well. Just like four, I think you brought four hogs there just to kind of help work around the base. Tons of Valks going, hits that king ability, take down that expo. It's only a cannon, a couple of mortars and an archer tower to go. Still has those hoggies in there doing work. Great value on those four hogs. They are just working around the base. Finally take down that cannon. Just in time. Kablam. Little Builder's Hut, and that's tree in the bag for Bell. Job, girl. All right, Val. Val out of six pack, too. A lot of six pack champs this war. Uh, interesting base. Uh, Val's going to go ahead and bring just a stone hobo. <clears throat> Gets the wizards down first, recognizing they can get those trash buildings without having to drop the golems. Um, so I've been really trying to do that a lot. Just get pieces of your funnel created to preserve the golem's health as much as possible. It's always very important in a raid. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you see what I mean? Like one, two, three, four. On the fifth building now, uh, really without being touched. So I still baby deep placement. That funnel's now created on that side. Two golems in very, very tight. There is no buildings at all between 12 and um, 12 and 9 for uh, for Val to worry about for the funnel. So this goes ahead and drops this giant on this troll Tesla. Quick wizard takes that out. <clears throat> Everything's now going to funnel right into this base exactly where he wants. Raid spell is down. Going to smash through all this stuff very quickly. That hound again. Stupid hounds. Killing us in the clan castles lately. <clears throat> Seems like they're making a big comeback. A lot of people are opting to use them. Anyhow, but it goes down. Doesn't really do a hell of a lot. This whole, you know, mass of golems and rock is just pushing through this base. Well, this queen and these bowlers walk in behind. Absolutely smashing all the defenses in their path. Gets these few hogs starting from 12 o'clock now. It's going to start sprinkling them in. Sends in a big pack at 6 as well. Um, just wants to basically everything to meet up at 9 o'clock, right? There's this troll Tesla he's got to worry about on the outside, but no big deal. Has more than enough hogs. Just just working them through. Drops three right on that Tesla. They take care of that, no problem. And three stars is imminent. Just a bunch of trash to go. Look at all the units left. Just crushed it, Val. Nice job, buddy. Um, Robbie bringing the dragons. Whenever guys see a grounded expo and see one, two, and three air defenses that are all targetable from a queen walk or basically from any unit standing to the outside of the wall, just very, very exposed air defense, um, our guys are probably going to go for dragons. Um, you're going to see exactly how this works out. Nice little job here. Gets the first air defense down. Bowlers on this side following the king and queen on this side following the goal. Now, uh, no wall breakers, nothing. Basically just wants to walk these units in a V shape up each side of the base, getting all three air defense out of the way. I think that was the air defense. Um, Zap weight goes down at the queen chamber air defense. This is now an air defenseless base in about five seconds. 
four, three, two, one. All right, so we have no air defenses remaining. Uh, you know, 47% of the base is already taken care of. Still has his king working. Finally has to hit that queen ability. She's going to pit her out here in a moment. But let's go ahead and drop these seven drags right on this queen chamber. Out comes that clan castle. Dragon's under rage. Going to absolutely smash through this stuff. Nice little baby D placement on the outside here. Getting its own rage effect. Uh, taking care of that troll Tesla. Well, not troll Tesla, but taking care of that Tesla on the outside. Few balloons in there just to help smash through these defenses as soon as possible. Down it goes. The only expo set to air is now down. No real threats. There's a couple Teslas. No, an Archer Tower. Other than that, there is absolutely nothing other than a bunch of mines that are going to take care of these dragons. Just needs to work through this Tesla. <coughs> Three dragons on the outside will do that. No problem. A couple dragons working through the middle. Bowler's doing, trying desperately to get through those walls, but it ain't, ain't, ain't going to happen. <clears throat> Wizard Tower, Tesla, Wizard Tower, goodbye, tree in the bag, nice job, Robbie, good read on that base. Who needs wall breakers anyways? That's what I always say. Buck, oh. Bring the six Valks here. Um, sort of a, a stone go -va hobo go -va hobo go -va hobo that's what we're going to call it. Um, just getting this photo created. Basic stuff. Very quick CC pull. Another thing I've never been a huge fan of is, is the really off-centered CCs. I like trying to offset your CC from your queen and king. But when you can just drop something and it instantly gets yanked out, um, I don't know. I just don't. The value in that to me doesn't seem there. Um, you know, I do want the guy to have to spend a little bit of troop space at least to pull it out, not just basically drop and go. My nice little jump spell is basically opening up the huge core of this base, a lot of very small compartments. So he is getting pretty good value on these jumps because of, uh, because of what they let him into. Uh, a lot of walls for him to worry about getting caught up on once the jumps fade, but it doesn't matter. The damage is done, right? That expo's about to go down. Queen's about to step up, take care of, uh, the Tesla air defense area. Help those hogs out. He's got a few sprinkled in on all defenses. Recognizes that this golem is tanking these three point defense on the outside. So goes ahead and drops a couple quick hogs there. Do a little bit of damage while the golem does its tanking. I think he's got to drop a couple more in here in one second. So only a couple defenses go. Once he gets through that cannon, that bomb tower, and that archer tower, this base is done for. Nice little giant bomb there, but it is not enough to stop these hoggies. Down it goes. Down goes the cannon. Clean up time. Bucko crushing it. A little swag queen ability there. Bam. Lots of replays, oh Kim. Kim was bitching I didn't show his uh, his Penta in the last war versus uh, Fortis LTU. but <laughs> So I figured I'd show this one. Nice little Suicide Heroes right in at that class castle, right in at that defensive queen. Queen stepping up. Um, doesn't quite lock onto that baby drag, but it doesn't matter. Poison's going to end up finishing it off anyways. Queen's going to take a shot at it, finish it off, take care of some of that trash. Uh, but their job's done. That's all he wanted out of his uh, out of his kill squad. There just wanted the clan castle out of the way and that defensive queen goes in and drops hound number one. Um, I believe he only brings uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, pretty sure only four hounds for this raid <clears throat> for the four air defenses. What I think uh, Mike really liked about this attack was just sort of the way he could manage he, the way he gets his um, loons to ro uh, rotate around the base. Um, you're going to see he's just sort of feeding them all in through these all these other compartments and everything, including the hounds, are just working this perfect clockwise sort of circle around the base. And it's always what you ideally want in your attacks, right? You want that sort of unison movement for all your troops. You know, the sweeper was giving them a little bit of shit. Finally, it goes down. Work over that air defense. Boom, down it goes. There's only one more to go, and it's got a max hound sitting on it, just, just tanking away. Just got to work through that expo, work on over. Finally, the Max Hound does burst, but there's far too many balloons standing right over top of that air defense almost. It is about to go down, and down she goes. A couple cannons aren't going to do anything. Bunch, like, billion pops all around the base, cleaning up everywhere. Very, very sexy, my friend. Oh, Kim. Oh, Kim. Oh, Kim. 
Okiem. Okiem. Yeah, I'm a little crazy this morning. Uh, 28. Mr. Flower. Again. What do we recognize with this base as soon as we look at it? One, two, three, four air defense. All targetable from the outside. All very, very exposed. Really not a, even a lot of high hit point structures. I mean, you look in this hole basically, what is that, 10 o'clock? All the way around to four o'clock or five o'clock, there's not one high hit point structure, not even one. So, uh, Flower recognizes this and recognizes this two grounded expos. Well, we're gonna bring some dragons, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, Chad really loves this quick haste into things, um, he uses it quite frequently to just take out a quick target. Um, he even manages to yank the uh, whiz and a baby D out of that CC, which is nice. <clears throat> Starting to create that funnel, goes ahead and drops that queen very quickly. A little troll Tesla in the corner there, but gets his healers down, takes care of that. Just gonna take care of some of that trash, work on that baby D. Boom, boom, boom. Down goes the baby D, down goes the whiz. Let's go ahead and start walking in and up. Gets that other baby D down though, just to continue to work on that funnel. Didn't know about that minion there, and definitely didn't need to drop that minion there, but actually ends up working out for you because it sands there on that elixir storage or elixir pump. So the queen's now basically gonna walk. So he got the he got the first air defense from the few loons in haste, and then he's gonna walk the queen all the way up and around. And I believe she gets both the other air defense. So with the two grounded expos, well, that leaves you a lot of options. Now there is a lot of crap up here, right? Like like I had mentioned, because there's no high hit points, basically between ten all the way down around to five. Uh, that means they are all <laughs> from 11 through 4. Uh, but Flower does a really good job kind of breaking things down. Gets the dragons in there tanking. Gets the rage down. Gets those loons in there very quickly to start taking care of some of those defenses. <clears throat> dragons are just going to sweep across this uh, this section of the base. They're going to lock onto these heroes. Take care of the uh, defensive heroes. Down goes that queen. <clears throat> really, there is only, uh, well, as soon as his air defense goes down, he's got these troll Teslas that he's now dropped his king, sort of suiciding in from the 12 o'clock to take care of the one Tesla. But there's two archer towers, three archer towers, sorry, and a couple wizard towers, obviously in the traps, but um, not a lot that's going to handle these three baby drags that are left. <clears throat> Does end up losing his queen here, I believe. Yeah, so that was a little bit unfortunate. Did waste the rage spell, but at the same time, the healers go lock onto the king and let the king sort of do their work and continue to let those drags funnel through the base. Has three minis and an archer here for cleanup as well. So it's only a matter of time for this raid. Unfortunately, that loon was fighting the sweeper, couldn't quite get that whiz tire down, but it doesn't matter. See this king doing work, those healers he stole from the queen. Um, just doing work. He's going to work all the way down to that Tesla, take care of that Tesla in the corner while the drags take care of these. Grounded, poor little grounded expos that couldn't do anything. The little expo that couldn't. <laughs> Down the go, it's tree in the bag. Nice job, buddy. 27, Dally. Another Veeler protege of mine. <clears throat> uh, help, them, help them sort of plan this one. Uh, I like the whole idea at the beginning. There's that mini, that little Tesla there, but like the idea at the beginning, he was going to initially drop his queen a little more here, and we, we talked about dropping her more um, in this section at 9 o'clock, because she's just going to walk in, take care of that defensive queen, which is going to lock on as soon as she steps up into this area, and if he drops a baby D in between uh, this dark spell factory and right here, he's going to funnel that off without having anything to worry about killing the baby D, um, and then he's going to know his queen's going to walk down, and have access to that air defense and just be fine all the way down. So you're going to see how this plays out. Da, da, da. So down goes that baby D like I just talked about. It's going to start the funnel job over there. Gets that queen down exactly where, he's, where uh, we had planned it. See, as soon as that building goes down, as soon as this uh, army camp goes down, there's pretty much no worries whatsoever of her going up and, and around the wrong way. Uh, he did want to just walk her down this side. So it comes that hound, which again, another hound, every freaking attack. So the queen's gonna stand there and work on that. But he's already got the bowlers down on this side. One goes up to get that builder side. That's something I uh, should have mentioned when we were planning Dahlia. Always, always, always just get a wizard or a mini 
down on those army camps on the side where you're dropping your bowlers. Keep them focused on the base and on the buildings. But see what I mean? Whole huge funnel box. Only got one place to go. They're going to smash through this wall, lock onto this defensive queen. Uh, so this queen, his queen doesn't even have to worry about the defensive queen, even though that was the plan was this queen was going to take it, but we didn't expect a hound, of course. You see this, this Valk army is just going to smash through this base now, a little bit uh, cut off on this heel because the Valks do bust through this wall and then end up coming, busting back out through the wall right into the Tesla farm. So it kind of worked out perfectly, right? Queen and Valks are now meeting up in a glorious moment because the rage spell goes down and all those Teslas instantly die. Queen's going to start working through this stuff under that rage, getting the use of it after the Valks run through it. Now the healers are locked onto the Valks, which is good because they're just going to keep them moving around the base here while the Queen walks out, walks from behind and just mops things up as they go. Still has a heal spell, still has two wizards. Just absolute ton of units left here. Fast forward this a little bit. <clears throat> nice little heal. Queen's in there doing work. Even still, this late in the raid, like look how quickly the you know four, five, six Valks bust through these walls. Does lose a couple of the spring traps there. So just hanging on now, kind of by the skin of his teeth, but with the queen in there doing work. Everything's locked onto that uh, kill squad there, or whatever you want to call it, the king and and crap, and down it goes. Tree in the bag, Veeler style for Dally. Nice job, my friend. <clears throat> um, right. So I think that's about it. Just kidding, Zerds. Of course, I'm going to show this. Nice little Lalo, you know, level two Inferno Towers. Um, a lot of Town Hall 9 point defense, so that is very nice. That's always a uh, plan and a hit. That's like, okay, I have a little bit of breathing space now. <clears throat> so Zerds, he's going to go ahead. I thought that was interesting. Drop that Valk just to help start working through this trash because he's going to suicide his king or sorry, suicide is queen to get this air defense. Um, she steps up, she's going to start working on that defensive king. It goes for a little bit of a walk, so she starts chasing it. A little bit of a, a scary moment, but you knew in the end, he's definitely going to get that air defense because he's got to use the ability. She goes ahead and hits that ability. Down goes the air defense. Their job is done. Nice little funnel job by a couple more Valks on the outside there. Go ahead and let the rest of these Valks, I think four or five of them in with this king. Jump spell right on over to this queen chamber and second air defense. <clears throat> so down goes all that stuff, bam, bam, down goes the air defense, down goes the defensive queen, clan castle's yanked out, but it's a hound and a loop. Surprise, surprise. Um, now, the like I had mentioned in one of the other attacks, the downfall of that is exactly what I said. If, if you don't care, like his queen's dead, really nothing on the board that's going to kill this lava hound. Um... So his whole air attack is completely free. Like the, the 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 clan castle does not matter. Has all those balloons now over that first air defense. Has the hound moving across. Nice free spell gets gets put down. Well, he just has to uh, now sprinkle balloons in it from all directions. Converge on this one last remaining spot. <clears throat> down goes the air defense. Nice little heal spell to keep the balloons going after that hound bursts. Does still have almost a full health hound there though. Taking all those Tesla shots to the face. Not going to go down quick enough. Far too many balloons in there. Going to rock through that stuff. Got to work their way down to this Inferno Tower. I think he has two more loons he's going to drop on this back end. Nice haste spell. Throws right on top of the Inferno. Down goes the Inferno. Two loons on that Arch Tower. Just got to work through a bunch of the trash. See this hound? Little freaking poor little fat chubster on the outside over here. What did you do, bro? How did you defend Mega Baby's base? You did a horrible job. You're just sitting there watching these guys... Destroy the base. I don't know, man. Too many hounds. Too many hounds. Easy to plan for. But kind of a bitch to deal with on initial hits. That's that's what I that's how I would sum up hounds in this easy. <clears throat> Tree in the bag for Zerzi. Nice job, buddy. Boom. A lot of very clutch attacks. Um, like I said, the Basically, the war hinged on the fact that they didn't even get one star on BP. Um, had they, they definitely would have came away with the win. So, bet they're kicking themselves over that one. Um, but you, it, come on, man, four four hits, not one of them gets a star. Like that is insane. No one in the world would have ever predicted that that would happen. Um, no matter how good your base is, because GG is full of uh, full of awesome attackers at all the different town hall levels. And you know, we were not expecting to win just because. We were expecting, you know, they had four attacks, left, a couple tens, and an 11, I want to even say. 
pretty sure one of the attacks was an 11. Sorry, war events. We had, yeah, heard. Fortunately, you know, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm trying to find the first hit. So first hit, number four. This one could have cost them the war, actually. Um, I believe this guy, I don't want to show it, but I believe one of them quit early and potentially could have got still 50% and got that star, which would have been the difference. But um, absolutely unreal finish. Uh, obviously a surprise for us because we were expecting one of them to at least get a one one star, you know, like this last attack with one minute to go in the war, I would have just <laughs> gems 20 baby dragons and, and threw them all over the base and went for 50%. But uh, tough, tough one, Golden Goblins. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to be ready for us uh, come week six. So we look forward to that CWL match. Going to call it an afternoon here, though, guys. Uh, been a very long recap as is, and I got to go get ready for work. So that'll do it. For your wisdom from Wiser, just trying to help the bag that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.